this great saying once is, being a musician is incredible because you get to control time. You can speed it up, you can slow it down, but you get to control it. And that's what I want. I want to lose myself in that. I want to talk to you about next year's auditions. Be professional. No tears. No tears allowed in an audition. Be positive. Concentrate on what you can do and not what you can't do. Okay? I can't tell you what it says to me when you have not prepared thoroughly and then you sit in your audition and cry. Auditions are the hardest thing I do each year. La ti do re mi fa si la si fa mi re. They have to be able to read music. Um, they have to be able to read rhythms. Ta ki da ta ki da ta ki di da ta ta ki di da ma ta da ta da. Ta -ki -ta -di -ta -mi -ta -mi the reason it's so hard is because I see students who really want to move up. Oops. And I have to look back at them and say no. I think that the main thing that I noticed about Mr. Holes when I was like a freshman was that he's really scary. <laughs> he's, he's really hard. <laughs> so yeah, so he's so He's very scary when <laughs> you start quiet. He's quiet. really hard to approach. I was very intimidated by him. He seemed very serious. Taji, taka ta. How much did you prepare for this audition? I did prepare, but I'm nervous. It still sometimes happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's still it's pretty fun. scary. Yeah. <laughs> Take one minute to look at it, and then after a minute, I'll have you sing it for me. The scores on the score sheet were designed to separate those students who could demonstrate on the drop of a hat, these exercises, one minute, and those students who are still struggling. Do, mi, so, so, la, so, mi, re, mi, mi, so, mi, so, do, mi, re. I'm sorry. Some students have the ability, but might not necessarily demonstrate well in an audition. So sometimes I have to take into consideration the history of the work that they've done cumulatively. He's a little intimidating, and that's because he demands your respect, and you have to give it to him, otherwise it's not going to go well. I'm a tough cookie. <laughs> The two top choirs here are Madrigal Ensemble and Chamber Singers. Madrigal Ensemble is mixed, men and women, and the Chamber Singers is all women. One, two, three, four. A typical mixed chorus, such as the Madrigal Ensemble, is made up of four different sections. The basses, which is the low male voice, tenor, high male voice, the alto section with the low female voice, and the high female voice, the soprano section. Thank you. One, two, three, four. It's really fascinating how students sing differently standing next to different people. Row, row, row your boat to ready and go. Row, row, row your boat. I use row, row, row your boat 
It's an easy song, most people know it, and it has an octave leap, so it tells you a lot about the voice. And right here, row, go. I need you to sing with body. I don't want little girl sounds. <laughs> okay, right now I'm going row, row, and that's not what I want. It's not how we sing. It's not a children's choir. Row, row, row your boat. Switch places. Two. Row, row, row your boat. Four. Row, row, row Two. Your boat. So it's really interesting when you start playing with that. You know, you have this picture in your head uh, of, well, I could have so and so and so and so and so and so. I know their voices are going to be great together. I'm certain of that. Thank you, thank you. Angelique, step back. Amy, come up here. And then when you come here and you hear them, and I go, oh. Row, row. Um, Gabe next to Andrew. And Stephanie, thank out. you. And Molly, step, out. step in. And within Jessie. the course of just one pass, the sound is stronger and fuller already. They're just singing next to people who are of like voices, perhaps. You are here because I saw something about you that I feel is worthy of seeing again. I cannot take all of you into Madrigals and Chamber next year. Excuse me. You know, we have an ensemble that is different each year. Seniors graduate, juniors come in. Find your own space on the riser. Run in place. Faster. Knees up. Come on. Rub your face. <laughs> Be careful that the sound is not uh, me is one sound and a is one sound. It's not me a me a me. It's not like you know Chihuahua face. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the learning curve for you over the next few weeks is going to be high because you have probably not been in an ensemble if you are a new member that has worked this hard and this fast. Um, I'm hoping that you do learn to love the process, though. You can see that we are a much bigger group than we were last year. I have wanted to have a group with eight on a part for a long time. This is the first year I've been able to realize that and make it happen. But in order to have a group that functions, is we need to be a group that likes each other and works well together. Um, I expect you to be, to be a good character and to do the right thing. I don't do well at all with racist, homophobic, sexist remarks. So let's be really conscious of that this year and make sure that doesn't happen. With that being said, have a great day. I know what it was like to be an other in a way. So I'm working really hard to make sure that no one feels that way in my room. Adolescence is a weird time for everybody. I got beat up a lot as a child for no good reason other than I was different. I wore cowboy boots to school. I uh, pulled my pants up a little too high. I remember that being an issue. Music was always the safe place for me. It was a safe place. High school sucks no matter where you go. I hate the social games. I hate, I just hate the age. I just don't like people. That sounds terrible. I don't like people. You're walking down the hallway and you see someone who you used to be really good friends with, like say like elementary school or something. And 
just for some reason, because of the social structure of high school, neither one of you will like say hi to each other. But if you saw that person and you were walking down like Broadway and Fourth, you would say hi because you're removed from the equation. You know, you're removed from like the social scene. I'm fine like spending time on my own, I realize. I, I, like, I like my time to myself. I guess that makes me different. I don't know. Hey. What happened today? Oh, I got a 14 out of 15 on the physics. Math test on Friday. Spanish quiz tomorrow. Vocab quiz. What do you think of this sketch? It's pretty intense. I never had a first week that's been so I know. overwhelming. First day, five hours of homework. Yeah, right? Me and Brett are both taking AP Physics. We have that class together. I'm taking AP English and I'm taking AP US History. Ugh. Honors, pre-calc, calc A, AP Spanish, five. Then fourth period, I have AP Bio and then AP English. I have a tendency to, to take on a lot of things. Next year, I'm going to be in three AP classes, and it's going to be a lot English of work. AP 11, AP US History. I just got an editor position on the school newspaper, which is Econ, extremely exciting. Journalism. My English class is always math homework, and that's always at least one to two hours. I'm in math, ensemble, 30, so top band. I do youth group and stuff like that. And it's going to be a lot of work to try to keep everything in balance and leave me with some sleep. If you have forms, would you pass those to Amy and she'll put them in the box? Monday massage. Coming from women's to corral now magicals, it's just like, wow, I can't believe I got this far. Right now, I'm kind of like a loner. Just everybody has their own clique. I understand that Mr. Holes is trying to get rid of those cliques, but I haven't really established that really good friendship yet. So far, I haven't really gotten there. Stop, listen. Pillsbury Doughboy right there, right? <laughs> okay, so put your finger out. Sing it, go. He's my favorite teacher on campus, for sure. This way, not to each other, creepy. <laughs> oh, so there you go. Holes has taught me an incredible amount with reading music. Only the eighth notes, and beat, and go, and. It's definitely a different language. It's its own alphabet, it's its own grammar. But yeah, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I joined. So I'm at a point, here we go, first interval. It is like learning to read in another language. I mean, you're looking at symbols on a page and learning to interpret them into sound. It used to be I just wanted a good sounding choir. And what do you think is gonna be next? But I felt like all I was really giving these kids was the ability to stand in a, in a semicircle and sing five or six or seven ditties. Ditties. <laughs> Let's go from the top now. And that's it. Someone find us a log? It was sort of the equivalent of an English teacher handing out three or four novels and reading it with the kids, but the kid never learned how to pick up a book and read it themselves. Music is just something that just like, it brings people together. Spencer's my boyfriend, Spencer's my best friend. He's always been nice to me, he's always looked out for me, like even when we weren't going out, like when we were just like beginning to be friends. We were friends for a year and we started dating. That was like a week before school started. No, it wasn't. No, or it wasn't. We were in school, remember? <laughs> we were... Because then we had to go eat lunch together that one day. Yeah, okay, so we <laughs> were in school. Very awkward. I don't want to say a teacher's a friend, because the teacher's not somebody you're going to like gossip with and like talk about the, like your life. Clara and Luke got together the day after Cammie and Nick got together and broke up the day after they broke up. I did know that, and not that I make a business of knowing everybody's business. Yes, I do. I'm kind of nosy. <laughs> <laughs>
he put so much into this program and this choir, and he just wants it to succeed so much. What some people don't understand is I teach five choirs a day, and they're not at the same level. But da, 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 da. So you gotta communicate anger. One, two, and ready, and go. Shy. As humans, we're kind of naturally tense individuals. And the vocal folds aren't any different than the rest of our body. Ready, and go. We tense up there a lot. So a lot of times I'm doing hand motions to release the tension, because if they're concentrating on flicking their arm out one way, that releases the tension in their vocal folds. Always using physicality to make the music better. Heel, toe, heel, together. Heel, toe, heel, together. Kick, 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 kick. Left, toe. Heel, 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 heel. Heel, toe, heel, together. Come on, Gordon. All students learn in many different ways, and learning occurs in many different ways on this campus. Okay, dictation time. Bum, 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 bum. It can occur with students sitting behind a desk and taking notes by students running around a track. It can occur by going on a field trip. That's what makes education magical. The first year Mr. Holes was here, he came to me and said, I want to do an overnight retreat. I said, you want to do what? When I was singing in graduate school, we went away for a couple days to a cabin in the hills in Michigan. And I found it to be a really valuable time. And what I use it for is to get some good rehearsal time in where the distractions from the school are not here. You know, we're completely away. Cell phones don't typically work in the mountains, so kids are completely cut off and they have to be in the moment. I think what's more important is how the kids come together. Taylor, our towels are going right here. Come on. Okay. Oh, I forgot a towel. Yeah. I don't believe people can make really good music together unless they love and trust the people that, that they're making music with. Okay, can we make a rule like not talk about school and not talk about college and not talk yeah. about anything this entire weekend? All right. Plates, napkins, forks, salad, veggie, meat. 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 We're with the same group of people for 48 hours straight, and we see people at the best and at their worst, and at the, at the pinnacle of what we're doing is the music making. How do you make music musical? So you got the notes, great. Is it in tune? Are you breathing in the right place? Is it, are you phrasing correctly? Is the language pronounced correctly? Bases. It is the job of the teacher to make sure you're addressing all of those issues up and down the spectrum so that every kid remains engaged and challenged. And. Sopranos join. Oh, 
what's up. Get your hands out because you're almost two beats ahead of us. All of you. It's very, very slow. Beat and sing and. we're stopping. Not bad work. They're unable to focus for extended periods of time. We know it's like 20 minute segments and they're... For me it was how much can I get accomplished and keep their focus and get it done and then let's change our minds and do something that requires a different type of the brain activity so that I can get them back to doing what I want to do. Without speaking or lip syncing, get your log in the order of your birthdays. And ready and go. <laughs> hands into the center of the circle and grab someone's hand. You're going to untangle. All of those activities, in some way or another, Tails. were team building activities. Put on everything in the bag correctly. Go! And nice and in dunk. Too loud, tenors. Stop. I think you are all destined to be crooners, singing wonderful jazz and 1920s music as you just take your liberties. It's, you just love that sound, tenors, and I'm really excited about that, but you slow us down. This is like piece number five now, where you're so in love with your own sound. Me, 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 re, do, re, re, mi, so, la, mi, re, do. Really? Exultate, you, sti, in, do, mi, no. And you're doing this. Eggs, you're not talking while I'm instructing. Listening does not involve speaking. I don't know if we have a society that knows what listening really is. We don't do a lot of listening anymore, I, I don't think. Good, your pencil's out, please. One, two, three, measure four. Write swell, as in a swell of a wave or a swell of a crescendo. Then, starting in measure 14, I want you to write anticipation. We walk the streets of Disneyland and music is constantly playing over the loudspeakers. Um, we go to football games and while, or basketball games and while the team is warming up, music is playing. Music has become background, background, background. So when you bring it to the foreground in an artistic way and you're asking people to learn from it and pay attention to it and to structure it and make it great, people struggle with that because it is not right now, culturally, what we're doing. There's not a rotten kid in this bunch. There's not one of them who deliberately is trying to, you know, stick that splinter under my nail and not listen. It's that they haven't learned that that's part of the game. Ah. Your diminuendo was great. 
really well balanced and well timed. And okay, I'm not going to give you comments anymore that are compliments or otherwise. It's, it's no point. You leave and you tell everyone that I never take time to tell you anything good. You talk over everything I say. How do you know? You have to want to hear something. It was a great diminuendo. And you have to be willing to change. What is next? for us. What do you want from this year? I know what I want. Do you know what you want? I realize that what I want is this, what we have right now. And I feel like, I, I don't know if I'm the only one feeling this way, but the feeling in the room right now is yeah. really awesome. good. That's important to me because I really, really love choir. Think about how much better it could have been if like every like 30 seconds that there was like nonsense going on, if that wasn't there, like how much greater it would have been. I had a great teacher um, passed away. She taught me many things, but one of the things she used to say is, why not give yourself goosebumps every day? That's what I want. I want I want what we're doing to feel so great and so right that I get goosebumps every day. And that you do too. They get the message. They get the idea. Now they have to make that happen. I have music for you. Here's the Ave Maria. There's a copy for everybody. Here is the Exultate Justi. You can pick these up later today because they're always. We rely almost entirely on fundraising to provide almost everything that we have here. Our budget is over $7,000 a year for sheet music alone. We need to raise money for the choir because the only thing that the district pays for is the salary of Mr. Hulls and the salary of Ina Ganelis, our accompanist. And everything else in this choir room is paid for by money that we raise, be it the chair that I'm sitting in, or the risers, the music stands, the bookshelves. When their budget cuts have come through, no one has ever gone to the board and said, oh, well, sorry, we're not going to teach math this year. We're not going to teach chemistry. Sorry, no more chemistry classes. We just don't have the budget for it. It's always the arts that go. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Heather Graham. I'd like to welcome everybody to Sweet Serenade. We encourage you all to get up, mingle, have some sweet treats, and check out the auction. The Sweet Serenade is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Parents get to shop around at the silent auction. You know, we get donations from local businesses. We're fortunate to be in a community that really supports the arts. I have just brought out some Bach. <laughs> this is a piece of music that this group of students has never seen before. And I'm going to give it to them. And they're going to have 10 minutes to learn this piece of music on their own. Zeit froh die Weil. Do any of you know this piece? Have we ever sung this piece before? No. Yes, we know it. <laughs> Pay no attention to the liars in the group. Because they are simply saying yes because they don't want to do this. So, we'll see you back here in about 10 minutes.
I've always been very curious about science. I love it. It's great. I'm taking physics right now. It's such a great class. Probably my favorite subject. That or math. What's the homework situation like, Isaac? Good amount. Maybe just watch a short show. I'd like to grow up to be a doctor. I got introduced to the hospitals and surgeries and things when I had the surgeries on my arms, um, ninth and not, mostly ninth grade. Do you want to see? I'll show you the scars. They're pretty nice. <laughs> I'm proud of them. Oh, yeah, God. I have these. I had a couple surgeries on my arms because uh, I had an autoimmune disease uh, that kind of messed with my bones. and. Um, and they operated and then I broke my arm, so I was in a sling on one or the other arm for about uh, over a year. I used to consider myself a band person. I played trombone. I still love trombone. I now think that choir is now my main focus in music. It can't be compared to anything else that I've done. The feeling that you get when everyone sings together, it's kind of, you hear it first, and you feel it, and then when the chord locks into place. It flows over you and you just become immersed in it. You listen and you can hear all the littlest things, and even something that's not a part of the chord. Your ears just become so much more in tune with what's going on around you. It's like it's supernatural hearing. You know, sometimes I just wish that it, school was easy for me and it's not. You know, I'll be like crying, you'll be like, like, I don't understand, like, why I can't be good at math. Like, why, why am I not good at math? And I was like, you know, like, not that you're not good at math, you're just better at other things. I love theater, and I love singing, and I love performing. You know, I could do performing, or I could be a dentist. I don't really know, but I do love performing, so I guess if I would say that I have a dream, then it would be something to do with performing. I think that's probably a big struggle for many kids, is finding where they fit and where their identity is, because they're in this kind of limbo world right now. Teenagers are not fully formed people. <laughs> I mean, there's so much going on. It's like you have APs and your social life. Anytime that you get teenage guys and girls together, there's gonna be like, there's gonna be a struggle. The senior boys. <laughs> yeah, that is so yes, good. Yes. And it does seem like they care sometimes, but to me, sometimes it seems like they don't care. The other day I looked over and we were doing warm ups and they were scratching each other's chins. I don't know why. And it just seemed very odd. I don't know, just I don't understand what's going on in their brain sometimes. Choir girls are amongst the scariest people in the world because they're competitive and, you know, if you, if you anger them, they will draw claws. They're like, ah! When guys are, like, young, they're going to be more, like, rowdy and stuff. <laughs> then again, the girls are extremely talkative, so girls will just talk and talk and talk, and then that kind of gets in the way of, you know, trying to work and focus. They're distracted sometimes by each other. And that seems to pull them off task very, very easily. It's your break between classes. So if you want to take it up with this, then that's fine. Stay in your sections right now. I don't have any other classes with Eloise. We don't even really share the same interests that much. Like, I'm into sports, she's not. She's into journalism, that's like so not what I enjoy. But music lets us have something to like really connect and relate to. Yeah, it is scary thinking he might get hurt because he did get hurt. A lot, I, uh, I broke my foot in my league finals match. I broke my foot in three places and detached the ligament. And I had surgery, and I was on crutches for like two and a half months. 
There's a video of him breaking his foot. There is a video of me breaking my foot. Spencer wants to stay with me forever and we want to be together forever and whatever, but he just like knows that that's not realistic and probably not going to happen. And I have like a problem with that reality, like making myself realize that. I don't want to realize it. Have a seat for the announcements. Hi, I'm Eloise. Um, I'm a junior in modules and I'm running for VP. I think I would make a great vice president because I love choir and I love music. I have officers and so we elect two juniors to be vice presidents and then they move up to being choir presidents their senior year, basically. This year I decided, well, we have a television screen up there. It would be great if they made videos. I am committed and dedicated to the Samo High Performing Arts. And in my mind, I was picturing that they would do something very presidential-like, sitting and talking about their qualifications and why they'd be a good candidate and... Sup, dogs? It's Beehart in the cut. And I don't want this choir program falling in a rut. So Out of the, the five that I got turned in, I got one like that. And I got four who created a funny ad. Yeah! The kids were very creative, but they had very little to do with, with being president. Remember dogs to vote Bret Hart on your ballot. You could probably ask a lot of those students, if Mr. Halls had a choice between this and this, which would he do? And they would know the answer to that because I'm not a, I don't surprise people. Um, what surprises me about them is they might know the answer to that, but that doesn't affect their decision making. <laughs> Gee, Mrs. Penguin. Vote for Isaac for VP! They still haven't gotten the idea that it's a group effort entirely yet. They're still one or two that are unfocused or straggling behind or left behind in some in some cases. Who's leading today? <laughs> No, no, no. We're going to sing two things together. So tonic, root position, and then what? And then uh, dominant seventh, first inversion. No. no. Dominant seventh, and then you do first inversion. Then you do first inversion. <laughs> or you haven't been paying attention in the first place. You have the tools you need, but we always want to be given things. The Chinese proverb where you will teach a man to fish, you're still at the, just give me the fish. I don't care to know any of the other stuff. And you should push yourself to learn how to fish, because then you have many more options to you. You know, you could have halibut or mahi mahi or swordfish or sardines. I mean, the options are endless. It's almost like as teenagers, you all are very, you all try really hard to break the rules. You know, it's kind of like you're. Can I get away with this? Can I get away? Oh, can I? Can I push curfew just a little later? Can I? But when we get to music, you're very much about those rules. It's a half note. I'm going to sing a half note, and I'm going to go on. And so I want you to break the rules here a little bit more, and I want you to be, have a little more elasticity. Music has to have elasticity. If you even think about what this text means, oh, please just let me cry. Let me lament. Let me be sad. So if you were just saying that in English, you wouldn't go, please let me cry, please let me cry, please let me cry, please let me cry. Let me cry. Let me lament. Leave me be. Not many of the kids in Madrigals know about my situation. We recently got evicted from our apartment. And it's so hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. Going into choir relieves my stress. It helps me go through my day. It brightens my day. It's just, it just makes me happy. Choir has done a lot for me.
when I left grad school, my mentor says, you need to do an all pop music concert sometime. And I said, why? And he said, because it scares you. Cafe Samo is kind of a variety show. I get that most of them, or at least many of them, don't have Mozart or Bach on their MP3 players. So it's kind of a gimme to them. It's like, this is your night to do what you like to do. This year, there were three of us who kind of led everything with the assistance of Mr. Holes when needed. It is a place for leadership. What it really also means is more work for me. Henry. I'm not sure this is very good. Okay. So I don't know, they've gotta get it, they've gotta get it together or yeah. it can't go on stage tomorrow okay. night. Should you tell them that? Or? Yeah. I don't know that can go on stage like that tomorrow night. It's just not sounding good, because it's right now, it sounds like something you threw together last minute. So I'm not saying that to be mean. I think you want to be proud of what goes up there. We're in the key of um, D, flat. D flat. There's nothing as low as a woman. Is that right? Yeah. Last year, when we did our duet together at the Cafe Sambo, we performed uh, a duet from Wicked. We both dressed up as girls. There's always a woman. We're going to try to top that this year. We're going to try to do an even better duet this year. We're probably both going to dress up as girls again, because that seems to be important. <laughs> 7 o'clock in here before we open the door. The quarry. I know, yeah. yeah. We really wanted to do it, but we just didn't feel prepared. You need a teleprompter. <laughs> so finally, we figured like it's best to not perform it and not make ourselves freak out for everything else that we're doing in the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cafe Samo. If you like what you see, uh, I taught them everything they know. And if you are offended or you don't like what you see, it's entirely student run. I had nothing to do with it. Winner take all. Winner take all. Winner take all. There's a misconception in the understanding of popular music in that, yes, sometimes it's a bit more casual, but if you're gonna come up here and do a popular piece of music, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what makes Adele's voice sound like Adele. We were receiving a lot of pressure from people, we were really nervous, but then we went outside and ran it, and we ran it some more, and a lot more. <laughs> Hi, I'm Isaac. Hi, I'm, I'm Brett. And we'll be singing There's Always a Woman. I definitely did not feel entirely comfortable, given that the day before, we messed up like 85% of the time. <laughs> There's always a woman, the counterfeit check, the snake in the woodpile, the pain in the neck, the sand in the oyster, that isn't the pearl. There's nothing as low as a woman, darling girl, pet, lamb, dove, fish. 
It was, it was a good time. Shoot to kill! Went really well, and I felt good about it. I don't know if that was necessarily a quality performance. I think it's what they settled for as a quality performance. That whole thing was rushed, but I think if they had put the practice time in, they would have been relaxed going into it, and it all would have been fine. I think that they are very much caught up with good enough. Realistically, I think Mr. Hall's expectations are very high, and while I think we can get close to them, I don't think we'll ever be as good as he wishes. I believe in complimenting when they really deserve it, when they've really done something special. And it's not because I don't care about them, it's not because I don't want to build them up. We are giving these kids a disservice if they believe that everything they do is incredible. Girls, let's make it a productive rehearsal. Once the kids leave my class and go on to college or to a job even, that shouldn't be the first time they've ever heard that something wasn't right. It's true that he's never satisfied. And he's, he's, he tells us that a lot, is that uh, you know, no matter what, I'm never going to be satisfied, and you, you guys know that. And it gets frustrating sometimes just because it's uh, so true. Cole sent out an email to promising young singers in his choirs that said, if you're not already taking voice lessons, you probably should because I believe you can be a lot greater than you are. And one, two, three. Mama del core, when I was younger, I did have piano lessons and voice lessons, but that was only for like I guess a year, and my mom said to stop taking them because you don't need it. Okay, that's in good shape. Um, yeah, so there's, it's, it's so much better, but there's still a little bit of that, you know. Not having the advantage of having a tutor makes me feel I'm like one of those kids that are isolated, in the corner, just standing and watching everyone else succeed while I'm just sitting there. Obviously people with more money have more privileges. And that's unfortunate that not everyone can afford the same experience. Now we're living with my mom's friend. Well, yeah, friend, who lives like two houses down from my grandma's house. We all share one room, so there's like a huge bed for my mom and her boyfriend. And then there's a bunk bed for me and my brother and I. It's just like really hard for me to do homework at night. I'm always getting yelled at, like, turn off the light, we want to go to sleep, like, and it's only 9 o'clock. Like, I just keep thinking, like, where could I go as a backup place? And then my mom's like, oh, we'll probably just live in the streets. No, like, no, I don't want to live on the streets. Like, are you crazy? I have homework and stuff to do. Uh, one week from tomorrow is the Golden State competition. There are 12 ensembles. Uh, Everyone gets in by audition only, so it's really good ensembles. I hate competition, even though I'm a competitive person. I hate competition in the arts, because I don't think everything we do needs to be a sporting event. But I do think there are great rewards that come from pushing yourself. I've seen how it pushes us all to do more and to achieve more, and I think that's important. That's, that's, that's the, the reward for this competition. We performed Omanium and we thought it was great, but now we're running it again over and over. We just fixed that. That's the vowel, I don't want eh, I want it more oh in that. It's kind of discouraging for us because we felt like we did it really well. And, the re and because he wants to keep working on it means that we didn't do it perfectly. And I feel like some of us felt like we really did do it perfectly. No, no, it's one phrase, it's not no, 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 okay? You're, like, fo folks, these are tiny details, but it's what's gonna separate choirs, okay? It's more than just notes, it's more than notes. For me, if you've reached this bar, then I'm gonna move the bar here because after Algebra 2 comes, you know, calculus or whatever the progression is for math. 
Again, from the top page. Each time, each time stronger, each time more confident. It's getting better each time, guys. Keep working. We're really used to doing something, getting it over with, and moving on. And Holst doesn't move on. Back away. I don't know if we're ever going to be there, and I don't know if I ever want to be reach it. I think that's part of the journey and part of what makes learning incredible. I want you all to sing the same ooh vow there. Fix it. Always reaching for what can come next. What can we do next? How can we push kids more? Um, without killing them, of course, you know. I would sort of liken Mr. Holst to my mother as they both demand perfection. My dad was a truck driver. He never went to college. He had the saying he would use over and over again, I will sell pencils on a street corner so that both my kids go to college. I was kind of very the dutiful son. Yes. I worked really hard. I wanted them to be proud of me. I wanted them to not have to shake their heads and wonder where they went wrong. We don't need to hear the word Preston at the end of every single time we sing it. It's not okay. And if it's such a bad mistake, then you sing the part that he's supposed to do and fix it. Sorry, it's just, it can't always be one person's fault. We have problems listening to each other. We have problems interrupting. And we also have like musical problems like blending. In my entire time with you this far, it is yet to be entirely focused. I think what it is is just the, the chemistry of the group because all the juniors are really close. They mess around. I think the seniors also at this point are also like, ah, we're done. Like, It should be a place where they can let go and feel a little bit less of the rigors of academia. On the same token, the way they're letting go needs to be through the music and not through their inappropriate behavior and lack of discipline. Your job is to be present and to be here. So if you want to have conversations, those can remain at text messages during passing periods. Now we're here. This is our time. To say the least, it's a little bit tense. Between the holes and the choir, yeah. All I really want from them is a focused 50-minute rehearsal a day. I mean, I am having to remind this class in my most advanced ensemble to bring their music every day, to have a pencil in rehearsal every day. You wouldn't think about going to your AP calculus class without your calculator and your calculus book. We will wait. I should not have to do it in my most advanced ensemble. It's your own, Peter. You're a section leader. They have so much potential that they fail to live up to and they fail to see in themselves. As many times as I try to be optimistic and tell myself, like, no, we really are the best and we can live up to his expectations, it's hard for me because I feel like we haven't. In terms of being a conductor, he's doing, I think, everything he can, but I, I don't think he's a child therapist. So I'm hoping that we'll just figure it out. There are moments where I have to question whether I'm being effective. Or am I just fighting a losing battle? You question whether this is what you're meant to do. Should I continue doing this? Is there another path for me? What's really interesting to me is that whenever I'm really in that dark place, I get something. It's strange how it happens. A parent will write a letter saying, you've really spoken to my son through music and you know that's been incredible. Or I'll get a note about a concert that they attended. Or wh whatever those are, there's little shining little, little pieces that come back to me every once in a while, out of nowhere. Uh, and they always come to me when I'm really in that place. And I don't know how that happens. But those things put me back on track. I can't rely on that. I have to stop and force myself to look at 
all the good and the things I have accomplished. Golden State is a whole different realm. The choirs that are competing there are absolutely fantastic and very musically talented. We definitely have a chance at winning, but I'm not trying to get my hopes up. They have been a big fish in a small pond situation. Though that is fine for here, I don't think that serves them in a life lesson because sooner or later they're gonna be a small fish in a big pond and they're gonna have to still find a way to rise to the top. All right, what things are you hearing and what things do you want to improve upon? Eliza. I think we've gotten to the point when we know all of the pieces well, so I think now we really can just go with what you conduct. And have fun. Yeah. The reason you're in choir is to enjoy singing. I would hope that's why you're here. Yeah. I mean, these aren't the coolest people in school to be hanging out. I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Very cool, very cool. I mean, I like how you Very pointed over there. Yeah, like, yeah. Over here, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And having fun is the result of hard work. Right? right? Make sure you're really standing poised and ready to show them what you can do. We can do this. Michael, here we go. If you've ever been in the ocean and the wave comes, it's just the rolling ones that just come by and lift you up a little bit. And for a brief moment, you're in control, but you're also out of control. And you kind of have to just let it be and ride the wave until it sets you back down on the sand and then it picks you back up again. I think that's probably the sensation for me of conducting. When I can just make the tiniest little shift in my gesture and things change and I see that they hear it change and they know how special that is and I can see it in their body language. The kids, their eyes get big, they, they get the magic for that little moment. It's, that's pretty amazing.
Thank you. Okay, great, great results. Some very, very close. Traditionally, the top five choirs in Golden State are eligible immediately to be a part of Golden State next year. Okay, announcing the top five choirs in this year's 2012 Golden State South competition. Coming in fifth place, Santa Monica High School. So um, I'd like to start out by talking a little bit about what your impressions were of the performances. Joe. I can't help but wonder if we would have done better if we had sung Buff Humdinger. And like everyone seemed to have one and kind of have like a crowd pleasing kind of thing and like choreography and like everything. <laughs> so I don't know. It's frustrating because maybe the choirs that did have the humdinger or whatever, that catered more to these particular judges' tastes. What I think is also interesting, though, is there were seven choirs that didn't place yeah. who all had, 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 had a humdinger. humdinger. Yeah. So it's not our humdinger that kept us out. It's not the lack of a humdinger. I feel like not many other choirs had a risk piece, or maybe they did and they just like pulled it off, but I feel like they were really safe with their selection. Well, maybe we pulled it off too, and like they felt the same thing about us. We're not the top pinnacle, where sometimes we all like to picture ours. So, you know, here we are and everyone else is doing this. Well, no, maybe we're not at the top and we do have some work to do. But I think it's good to see where you are and how, and where you would like to be or where you want to go. Would you please give me more than lethargy today? Wow. Next piece. We had another one of our odd rehearsals. Thank you. Pack it up. Thank you. It had been a really tense environment just in rehearsals just because of lack of focus, frustration on his part, frustration on our part. Some people not wanting to you know, take accountability at all. If you sign up, you make a commitment, then you follow through. And if they, if they wanted an easier time, they should not have auditioned to be in the advanced ensemble, because that's not what this is about. It's about achievement at the highest level. So there was a lot of tension in the class, so we had a meeting to, to defuse the situation. I decided that we needed to have a candid discussion. He's playing like this ridiculous Tai Chi feng shui music and we were all there were chairs in a circle and it was like it was like group therapy one student happened to just talk about how um, he doesn't want to focus in choir and um, he sees it as a social outlet when he said I just want to come to choir to hang out with my buddies or something I remember freezing in that moment because uh, I was just like are you kidding me and it was just so obviously like what the problem was. I think that that comment was a major breakthrough because after he had spoken, another couple students said something to the effect of, yes, choir is a social place, a place where we can be together and we, we come together to make music and you know, a number of us are friends in here, but there has to be balance. There has to be balance with what we want to accomplish as well. It focused us, like after that, I don't think anyone wanted to do that again. Once we all really understand what we personally add to the choir and we all accept that that is our role in the choir and we all just come together, we can be the best. We can be better than Magicals has ever been. We've um, grown closer as a choir. Everybody's more comfortable, I would say. You know, everybody knows each other better and there's more of a sense of connection. We talk about everything. We're just more open. We're more open in choir than we are in other classes because you have to be. I, I just, I love choir. I love 
I love Mr. Halls, I love the kids, and it's just been one of the better high school experiences. We actually have our own place now. It's an apartment. It's nice. I mean, it's better than what we had before. Even though it's far, it's worth coming here. I was actually thinking about transferring there, but then I thought about like what I'm leaving behind, and choir was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, uh, no, I'm not about to leave the choir. In the orchestra and in the band, you know, you're playing something else. But in the choir, it's your own body. It's your soul is like a part of this experience, and it's really cool. Be ready to work next week because we're going to go crazy. I'm going to be crazy. It is normal. Week of the concert. I warn you now. Come wearing armor. Many lunch periods and extra time remain for you to take advantage of fully. Hint, hint, double hint, hint. The rehearsals towards the last weeks of school were really focused and exactly what I would have wanted for my entire year. It's sort of a better late than never scenario. Yes, good. Good, good, good. Excellent, excellent. Don't forget it or do it any other way. This is the big concert we put on here that features everyone. The concert is called Modus Perpetuus, which translates to constant motion. It's like a choral version of surround sound. It will be the last time that I'm singing with my fellow choir members, you know? It's really hard for me to say goodbye. So I think that's going to be, that's going to be my hardest. That's going to be the hardest, yeah. I'm going to be so sad. Part of what makes this concert special is that we just do this with this rehearsal. And it is what it is. We do our best. So let's commit ourselves to doing that for the next hour. Women's Chorus, you're at that door back there, ready to come in. Go. One piece will start and it'll be on stage. And then a, like a different ensemble will be up in the balcony or in the foyer. We're going to try and catch our audience off guard and make them pay attention to what we're doing. OK, we'll pretend that song has ended. Go. We have like a flight itinerary plan where we all get a list that says, OK, during this piece, this choir is going there, and this choir should be here, and the whole time no one's talking, and we run how everything is going to move and how we're going to get 150 students, most of whom are in high heels, to move about Barnum in a silent and orderly fashion. Stop. Please don't do the bad habit of breathing after every half note. The whole phrase is, my shepherd will supply my need. Not my shepherd will supply my need. I'm, I'm, I'm a control freak. Sit down, men. Women back on stage. We will do that again. I want to make sure that the product that goes out there is always reflective of me. It's reflective of my vision for the program, reflective of, of the professionalism with which I want this program to be seen. <laughs> With this concert, I wanted it to feel a little bit reflective. I think about how that might have been heard in the Middle Ages. You know, the monks were chanting off in the cloisters. And you might just hear that kind of wafting out lightly.
the challenge is always daunting. It is always, I always look at a hill and go, oh my God, another hill. Always, I, you know, I, I, I'm rarely the person to go, oh goody, a hill. But the process of going over the hill is awesome. When I can send them into groups and go, okay, go learn this part of the music and come back and we're gonna put it together. And I watch them working in groups and I see them collaborating. And then they come back and they take their little pieces and put it as part of the whole. And then it becomes more magical. And then we take that whole and we polish it and we hone it and we and it just it's a process that builds on itself. And I think I'm in I think I'm addicted to that process. We had to get used to each other at first, but now that we have, we make great music. When we're together, there's, it's just, it's like nothing else. Everyone cares about the music and cares about each other and working together, and that sensation is like ecstasy. It's hard to let kids go that you've known for four years. Mostly because you feel like you've just gotten them to where you want them to be. In many ways, they've become part of my family. Many of them come to me with issues they're dealing with at home or with their friends, with other teachers, and, and we, you get to know them on a different level. And then you have to let them go. I also have to look at it as they've outgrown me and they need to go start with someone new. And that's part of the life journey and the steps we take. We all start over at the bottom and climb our way up and start again and renew. It's hard, but also joyous. <laughs> 